Hi, and welcome to Lunchtime Prayer Power. Today, we're praying for families to have financial freedom. And we're praying for this, not part of a prosperity gospel, because God is not giving us wealth to spend it on ourselves, but that we are blessed to be a blessing. Now, yes, God wants us to have nice things. He wants to bless us, but that's in the context of what he wants for us. It's not that we are desiring earthly treasures. Amen. Yes, he's going to bless us with nice things, nice clothes nice cars, but we are not to be focused on those things and we are to get them at the right time. And if it's for us, some things God may not have for us, but he wants us to prosper. We wants us to be generous to others and we're prosper as we give into the kingdom of God. Luke 6, 38 says, given it, you will receive your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more running over and poured into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. So we want to be generous people of God, generous to the church, generous in the things that God has asked us to do. We don't want to give begrudgingly out of compulsion. And we also don't want to give out of emotions. Sometimes we may see a campaign and God's not called us to give, but we feel a pity and where God is saying, no, I've not called you to give to that specific thing. We want to be obedient in our seed because we want to sow on good ground. And so we want to watch being moved by our emotions, but we want to be compassionate as the Lord was compassionate. Jesus was compassionate and moved him to heal. And so we want to be compassionate for others and give as the Lord says so. Proverbs 13 and 22, good people leave an inheritance to their grandchildren. This is the New Living Translation, but the sinner's wealth passes to the godly. So there is a wealth transfer of the wealth of the wicked to the righteous, but why? So we can do the work of the church. So we can do what God has called us to do. It's not so we can store it up here on earth, but so that we can store up treasures in heaven, amen? Our wealth here is to do the work of the Lord. That must be our focus is to advance the kingdom of God, to focus on God and what he's called us to do on this earth. Our time is short. Our lives are fading away like grass, the word says. And so we want to be about our father's business in this hour like never before. Proverbs 21 and 20. The wise have wealth and luxury, but fools spend whatever they get. We don't want to be foolish spending our money on things that will not uh, generate wealth or will not bless others. They do not have a long-term value. We do not want to invest in those things, but we want to be wise and invest where God has called us to invest. God will tell us where to invest. And I'm talking outside of our tithes and authoring that belongs to the storehouse, but I'm talking about uh, outside of that, God will tell you where to invest to grow your money because he wants you to be a wise steward and wise stewardship is to advance that. Wise steward is to grow. We know about the parable of the talents where one of them, he just buried his talents because he was afraid of the ruler. It would have been better for him to put money in the bank at least to earn some interest. But the others, they multiplied what was given to them. And so we want to multiply the works of our hands. We want to multiply the seed that we've been given. Amen. And we're going to do that with sowing into the things God has called us to and also prayer. We want to pray over our seed, which is what we're going to do today. Amen. We're going to pray. And Father God, we thank you that you have given us the power to get wealth, not for ourselves, but for you, Father God, to do the work that you've called us to do. We thank you, Father God, that in, in blessing others, it is a blessing. And also you do reward us openly for what we've done in secret through prayer, through fasting, through blessing the people of God, through blessing the church. We're giving you back what you've given to us. And we ask you, Father God, to multiply our seeds, to remove any financial pressure, Father God, because that pressure does not come from you. We bind the spirit of lack, a spirit of poverty coming upon the people of God. We bind every spirit of confusion over our finances that is trying to confuse us on where to give. And we thank you, Father God, that we will obey the voice of the Lord in our finances. We repent for giving in areas that we weren't supposed to give out of compulsion or out of selfish this and maybe something that we thought we would get out of giving father god we repent for giving outside of your will we repent for doing anything outside of your will father god because we want to be faithful stewards of what you have given us we want to be faithful in that which is least so that we can be faithful in that which is much much we ask you father god to multiply us lord and help us not to be lovers of money we repent if we have focused on money and not focusing on you hebrews 13 and 5 says don't love money be satisfied 
satisfied with what you have. For God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. We thank you, Father God, that your love never fails. You never fail us. You never abandon us. You will never leave us nor forsake us. You are with us always until the end of the age. So we thank you, Father God, that you are a compassionate God. You are giving. For you love the world so much that you gave your only begotten son. And you gave him the opportunity to be equal with you. He did not think it robbery to be equal with you, Father God. So you've given us all things. You've given us everything. You gave us Jesus Christ. So there is no lack. We ask you, Father God, to show us your way in the area of our finances. Show us your plans because you have witty ideas and inventions to expand our territories, to expand what you've called us to do. You have a plan. And so we want to follow your plan. We want to invest in what you tell us to invest. So we ask for uh, strategic plans in our finances. Some you have called to businesses of finance. Some you have called of investment bankers, investment businesses to grow the kingdom wealth so that when people need money, they know where to go. We are the lender, not the borrower. We thank you, Father God. We decree and declare that we're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the field, we're blessed coming in and blessed going out. And we thank you, Father God, that our finances are blessed. They're overflowing, they're running forth, amen. Our cup runs over because we serve an awesome God and we sow into your kingdom. We thank you that the storehouses are full and you're opening up a blessing for us, Father God, that the rain is coming down. And it's not for us, Lord. We thank you, Father God, that we see your plans. We pull down what you want us to do in this hour so that we can be a blessing to our communities, so that we can store up, just like Joseph stored up in famine as he was under Pharaoh, so that they would have some in the years where there was famine. We stored up rather when there was years of plenty. He stored up when there was years of plenty so he could prepare for famine. Help us, Father God, to prepare for the days ahead. For us that are righteous, there will not be famine hitting us. Yes, there may be famine in the land, but as Joseph stood and as Abraham stood, they were blessed in famine. We decree and declare that we will be blessed in famine. The famine will not come near us. A thousand shall fall to our side, 10,000 at our right hand will not come near us. So the pestilence and disease will not come near us. We pray for health and wholeness as we're working. We pray that we will not be distracted by the things of this world or the cares of this world, but that we'll be stay focused on you, Father God, and all that we do. We pray that we will be so steadfast and immovable. We will not be uh, tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine and focused on the wealth of this world that passes away, but that we will be focused on you. Help us, Father God, to stay steadfast and immovable. Jeremiah 17 and 7 through 8 says, But blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. They are like trees planted along a river bank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. We thank you, Father God, that we will be fruitful in season, in all seasons. We thank you, Father God, that our leaves will stay green, that we will not have lost. And if the enemy tries to take anything away from us, it will be recovered and the enemy will have to pay back seven times what he stole. We pray, Father God, in this hour that we will be not deceived. Help us to avoid financial schemes and financial attacks, Father God. Help us send wise investors into the church house. Send wise counsel, Father God, so we know where to invest to grow your kingdom. We also pray against pestilence and diseases coming against the people of God to try and keep them from working, to try and make them idle, Father God. We pray, Lord, that we will be people of prayer, that in all things that we will pray and and not cease to pray, that we will pray in the spirit, Lord. Help us, Father God, to be people that are sold out in the things of you, that we stay steadfast and planted by that water, that we get our source from you, that we stay along those streams, and that we will be like rivers of flowing water, that we will pour out and flow in the spirit as we go forth. Help us, Father God, to be wise about our financial decisions and help us to stay confident and trust in you. Forgive us, Lord, for casting away our confidence. Forgive us, Lord, for not trusting in you as we saw these times and we see the economic woes and the talks about recession and this and that and this country and that country. But Father God, our trust is in you. We do not trust in worldly wealth. We trust in you, Father God. You own a cattle on a thousand hills. There is no lack in you. Your arm is not too short. So we trust in you, Father God. You built this world and you know all things. So we will not be swayed by the media. We'll not be swayed by the economic discussions of the investments and the economists because we know that you are a mighty God. We know that you are faithful and just. We know that you are covering our head as we sow into your kingdom. So help us, Father God, 
to be disciplined, to be diligent with our seed and not to fall away in this hour. But we pray, Father God, for those that are called, you've already know who's going to enter in, Father God, that we will not be tossed away, that we will stay steadfast, Father God, for those to press in, Father God, help us not to fall away. If it was possible, even the elect would be deceived. So break off any deception from us in this hour. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for what you're doing in this time. We thank you for who you are in our lives. You are a good and a mighty God. Amen. God bless you guys. Take care.